Yeah, if you're a bit of a uh, novice or a dunce when it comes to art, well, listen in, because this is going to be really good. This is making art accessible for everyone. Uh, artist Michael Tuffrey is here. This is what we're going to do. We're going to look at some gr classic New Zealand art, yeah. and we're going to discuss uh, what we're looking for, because sometimes people can go into galleries and get a bit confused. Yeah, OK. Good. And, they, and they end up going through faster. So what, what's, the, uh, what's the first one? Well, I guess before we start, what, what are you looking for when you, when you go in and... I think it's just an experience and yeah. knowing that the public it's actually free to actually go into these galleries and actually have that experience and actually looking what the picture actually does to you or whatever is in the actual gallery itself. So those spaces are really important. So like for example in Petonia they're like they've got three three major galleries there and you go in and just have that experience. So you, if you can't go in, you can always look through the window. Do you think there is art for everyone and people have just got to take the time to find what they like? Yeah, uh, unconsciously there is, yeah. I mean, we, I mean, down to our clothing, down to the branding and all that sort of carry on. So the art experience is actually happening every day. We're, vi we're visual creatures. Yeah, well, you know, you've got the internet and, you know, um, the bus, you know, the buses with their signage on and that sort of carry mm. on and the TUI, TUI carry on with, you know, the, yeah. the fancy fonts. Mm. I guess when you think about it, the world's an art gallery, isn't it? Yep, and as soon as you walk out of your house or even in your house, when you're having that discussion, you know, even down to the furniture, you know, unconsciously you don't realise actually it sort of dictates your space. Yeah, we're making decisions every day. Mm. Let's have a look at this. This is a, this is a Don Binney. Mm. A charcoal, yeah, an interesting piece. Um, it's, it's, um, Don's an interesting uh, person because we've got um, Robin White and there was a whole different um, uh, period of uh, artists around that time. So this is the 80s? Yeah, well, well yeah, obviously with the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the charcoal, but just his application actually of the actual image itself, especially of uh, Kitty Kitty, and, and it's staked at that stage. So these are almost like photographs or ta taken at that yeah. time. Because now, you know, our landscape's changing. Uh, these are sort of like uh, the visual records, but not a uh, photographic, but just the um, drawing itself. Yeah, mm. very good. Because I was looking at that going, I don't recognise it like that, because obviously there are houses and all sorts of things there. Yeah, yeah, well now, you know, Otago's changing, you know, so the landscape's changing. So, of course, you know, taking those photographs is actually really important for the, the actual artist itself. Mm. Now, this is a print. Should, do people worry about buying prints? Does it matter if you get a print? or Because um, a lot of people can't afford originals. It's, it's it's very a, this is actually an original. Is yeah, yeah, it's a charcoal, yeah. Look, what I know about art, you could write on the back of a postage mm. stamp. Let's move on. This is, yep. uh, who's this? Nigel Brown. Now, he's uh, really significant again. I know one of these artists who was sort of dealing with the uh, nuclear issue was uh, the, all the bombing was going over in uh, Mururoa, the testing. Yes, yeah. And he's actually been really quite interesting. He's sort of like a pretty amazing artist. He used a lot of text um, down to his coloration and actually his um, visual diary, uh, like almost like a visual diary over what he's recorded and painted and how he's reacted to it. Mm -hmm. So he's actually just, yeah, painted some pretty interesting takes on ourselves in the New Zealand landscape, but also politically got involved with the Mordor, the testing. Because I remember the exhibition was down in Dunedin like years ago yeah. when the testing was happening. So he's a really interesting artist. Another, again, another significant artist from around about the same period. I like the backstory of artists. I like a little bit of information beside the piece, whereas you like to go in almost blind and just yeah. see it for what it yeah. is. Yeah, because, I mean, like you said, you know, there's, there's the layman. But, you know, you're coming from an outsider point of view, and if you don't know too much about it, sometimes it's nice to actually have know nothing about it and actually see what the actual art does to you. And when you sort of let it breathe, or when you take that bottle, uh, the cork off the bottle, let it breathe over a few years, you start to mature or start to relate to it. Yeah. Mm. Do you spend a long time looking at each single piece, or? Um, I do, yeah, it depends on what experience you're after. You know, presently there's an exhibition on, it's a really interesting exhibition down at the City Gallery uh, from the Aboriginal artists, uh, and that's really interesting again. So it's what you want or what experience you want to actually um, you know have you know especially with the sculptures all around Wellington again yeah you know, so you can go for those different spaces stop yeah. and smell the roses if you're going to try and do it in 10 minutes you're not going to get much of an experience so take the time yeah yeah take your time yeah oh, Robin White well you like to say. yeah well it's, it's, I reckon she was actually one of those again one of those significant artists going relating right back to Don Binney and Nigel Brown again um, the subject matter like down to like an imported product she was working up in Tarawa. Um, she did an amazing series um, of silk screens and um, paintings that were she conceived in uh, Otago down here in Wellington. She was teaching out at Mana College. But what's interesting is the, her texts and her fonts that she's used in describing her experience 
uh, actually in uh, Kiribati or in Tarawa. So, so is, this, is this saying something about obviously the imported uh, products, yeah, cattle like, versus the native? Yeah, yeah. And then you've got um, these, these holding pot, uh, these coconut holding containers, even down to the language. So it was really interesting. I mean, I watched her when I was only uh, so young actually watching her work develop as yeah. she's gone, as, and now she's going through another interesting experience again. Do you develop a real eye for this? Because when I first walked in, I said, right, I see a cow and a tree with some coconuts, nice, move on. But do you, do you need no. to, after a while, do you develop an eye and you say, oh, I see yeah. the important, you need I to think. I think the more you actually go to these galleries and have these experiences, where, interact with the dealers or whoever's there, and actually, and you've got to remember these spaces are free. Mm. So you can walk, you don't have to go and pay, you just go and look and have that experience. And then once you start to mature like a, a fine wine, it's the same thing, you have this experience and then you start to really know the genres like this wood, uh, this is a woodcut, down to the uh, painting, down to a charcoal drawing. So you've got all these different mediums that actually give a different experience. Very good, okay. Philip Clermont, yeah, interesting character. Um, this is probably one of our, uh, again, um, an artist actually not present. Um, passed away a few years ago, but mm. again, it made a significant impact on some of us kids when we were actually studying New Zealand artists. So he's around about the same period as these, these uh, characters here. And here's, his paintings are probably more renowned. You know, you'll see some of these paintings actually floating around in Wellington. Um, and if you ever get the chance, go and have a look at these paintings. He did these um, woodcuts. I remember when I was at arts, uh, at school, still at secondary school, looking at these uh, wood blocks and Robin White. Mm. Very nice. It's a it's a nude woman, isn't it? Yes, it's obviously a nude woman, but we will be seeing them at ten thirty. Is that right? Is that what you said? Ten thirty-five. Not that I've set my watch or anything. Okay, this is this is really nice. This is Mount Taranaki yeah. or Egmont, if yeah. you. Yeah, and it's symbolic. I, mean, I really like, I like the Naki, yeah. or if you visit the Naki, or I mean Taranaki, I should say, pronounce mm. it properly. As I grew up, it was uh, Mount Egmont, but as soon as you go down part here, that main road, and you see that uh, beautiful, that mountain beautiful rise, colours. Yeah, and, and Michael Smith is a, another one of these significant artists. I mean, we're actually quite privileged to actually see all these pieces out here live in the flesh, but actually going to, like I said, going to the gallery and actually having that experience mm. and having a dealer or someone who knows what you're looking at giving you that experience. And once you get used to these forms or these shapes, you start to start up, build up a good uh, dictionary of visual images mm. about New Zealand. Hey, Michael, unfortunately, we've got to go, but thank you so much for making no, these fantastic. pieces available. Good luck. You're off to uh, Sydney? Yeah, yeah. That's going to be very interesting. Opening the International Festival of the Arts? Is mm. that, uh... Yeah, that'll be great. Oh, congratulations. Mm. Thanks so much again for uh, enlightening us a little no, today. thank you. Now, thanks to the Williams Gallery in Batoni for all these beautiful artworks. You can go and see them. They're on, uh, they're on Jackson Street. Yeah, Jackson Street. Very good.